Gracious Lord, we do ask this morning that by your spirit, you will take your written word and let it become the living word in our lives. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Lynn, for inviting me to share in worship with you this morning. And I bring greetings from St. Paul's Broad Street, where I serve as an honorary assistant. And I'm particularly pleased to be here this morning because we're beginning a, another year, although we've begun it, but this is the first Sunday in a new year. And we celebrate the beginning of Jesus' three years of ministry on earth, marked by his baptism by John the Baptist, and that's our gospel reading. But also in our Old Testament, uh, the reading spoke about the beginning of it all, the creation itself, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created. Well, the theme of beginning here is also, there's also a common element of the Holy Spirit. There is the Spirit of God, called the wind in our reading, but often translated as the Spirit. The Spirit of God hovering over the waters in the very beginning of creation, Genesis 1, verse 2. There is the Spirit seen by John to be descending like a dove on Jesus as he came out of the waters of baptism. Now we can understand that the descent of the Holy Spirit on Jesus and its abiding with him began a new age of God's involvement with us. That beginning, that new age of the Spirit was initiated at Jesus' baptism and came to its full fruition in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was literally poured out on the disciples and subsequently on every believer. And so in our Acts reading, we have the Holy Spirit coming upon some disciples as they were baptized. And so they began their walk of faith with Jesus. You can see quite clearly it's the Holy Spirit that uh, initiates and that generates the spiritual life of a Christian, as well as infusing every collective work of Christians in and through the church. And so as we begin this year, we all want God to act. We all want God, the Holy Spirit, to be active in all our endeavors, and particularly in our efforts to bring others into the way, the truth, and the life that we know is Jesus. So the question I ask is, how can we facilitate this? How can we encourage the work of the Spirit this year? Well, first we have to recognize that the Lord is, is sovereign. We can't force him to act as we would like. We can't manipulate God. Josephus, the Jewish historian at the time of Jesus, writes of some Jews acting precipitously during the war of AD 66 and 70. And they did so in the belief that they could force God to do something spectacular in order to keep his promise. It would provide, as it were, a shortcut to victory. It didn't work. In Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, a similar idea was put, given by Satan. Throw yourself down from the temple and, and God will help you. He, he, won't let you hurt. he won't let you be hurt. Jesus responded, don't tempt God. So we, we, we cannot set God up to act. We have to be open to his work and follow the guiding of his spirit and not try to lead him. But, but having said that, secondly, we are invited, we're even commanded to let all our requests, all our concerns be known to God in the hope and the, and the expectation that God will hear and understand and act. In other words, we're not to be passive, but active in our posture of prayer, of hope, and of expectation. It's also interesting to note that the Holy Spirit in our readings came through very specific human act, actions. John the baptizer baptized Jesus and the Holy Spirit came. In Acts, when Paul placed his hands on the new disciples, the Holy Spirit came on them. And we think of the day of Pentecost. Uh, the disciples were gathered together, come together physically as a group, and the Holy Spirit came. And the point 
I, that I'd like to make is that there's a direct link between what John and Paul did, baptizing and laying hands on, on, on the uh, new disciples, that same action and the working of the Spirit. The seen, the baptism, and the unseen, the working of the Spirit. It's as it were, it's an interface between the spiritual reality of God's sphere, which is heaven, and our physical world. It's what we call the sacramental aspect of our faith. The tangible things that you and I can do and say in relation to our Christian faith can and do tie into the working of the Holy Spirit. Now we will do that just in a few minutes at our communion. But as we look ahead to 2024, you and I don't know what the Lord has for us, perhaps as individuals or as a church. So what is it that we can do to align ourselves with God's Spirit? And what is it that we can expect or anticipate? Now, I don't know yet what uh, CCSJ, I don't know you very well yet, and so please forgive me if I speak in, in rather generic terms of the Christian endeavor ahead of us this year. Well, as we look ahead at the outset right away, it looks to be a world full of uncertainty and of concerns. But while we all have, I'm sure, been shaken by the tragic events of terrorism in Israel and fighting in Gaza and the war in Ukraine and the ongoing unrest in so much of our world, you and I can turn to the God of creation and know that he has gone ahead of us to the end of time. In the beginning was the Spirit, and in the end is that great picture of the city of God. So as God began the whole shebang of our world and of us, so he must have a plan for its ultimate purpose and redemption. That much we can be sure of. God will continue to be with us, with each faithful follower of Jesus in this year. So let me offer just a few suggestions coming from our readings that may help us in our faith journey. First, we need to get together with other Christians as much as possible. More than one person was involved in each of the occasions we mentioned in the Spirit's work. Did you notice? Especially we can note the disciples gathered together at Pentecost. You know, it's a simple but profound truth that Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, there am I in the midst. So given the challenges of the Christian faith from all sides, given the declining numbers in our churches, this is a time for all followers of Jesus to overlook our differences and to be together, supportive and affirming. This actually came to me very strongly. Chris and I were in Calgary last week visiting our, our daughter, and I watched the Zoom service from here uh, on Sunday morning. Um, and then, following that, I went to the church my daughter goes to. It's a, a Southview Alliance Church in Calgary big place, new church. Um, I, this was, the th I think, the third service of the day that I went to, and there were about 300 people there, and I was told that, that was, there were more people than the earlier service. That very big church. Um, does things in a different way. Basically, a worship band, and then a sermon, and a few prayers, and that's it. Um, not quite where I, where I see things, but I met afterwards with an old couple, and I, you know, they asked me, about myself. I said, yeah, I'm an Anglican. I'm not quite used to this. And they said, it doesn't matter. This is what they said. It doesn't matter. We're together in Christ. And I think that's very important. It's something you and I should know and think more of this year. Being together, overlooking the, the differences and affirming and supporting each other as Christians. That's the first thing, getting together. Secondly, there is a real blessing in regular worship. Just the routines of Christian life. The call for each of us to live each day for the Lord. To fulfill our call to serve 
and to follow. A daily personal prayer, regular scripture reading, regular confession of sin, seeking and knowing God's forgiveness in Christ, and the fresh start that he then offers us. These simple spiritual exercises, the routines of faith and of service, I believe they open to us the spirit and I believe they make, it, they make us available to allow the spirit to work. Sometimes, especially in February, it seems a drag and a routine, but how important it really is. The regular blessing, the real blessing of regular worship. But thirdly, you and I ought to be on the lookout for new beginnings for the work of the Spirit. I like the way Bruce said it last week, anticipate miracles. Well, you and I should expect new initiatives. But realize, and this is the catch, realize that this may mean the ending of some things we do. And that's hard. You and I are all comfortable with the way that we've done things before. And one of the hardest things in a church is to acknowledge the needed end of a program or a tradition or a way of doing things. Now, of course, we must never change for change's sake, but we need to make space and resource available to allow for new initiatives, allow for fresh approaches, a better way to relate our gospel to the changing world society. And that's a wonder and the power of our faith. It's always relevant, it's always relevant. And there's always ways in which we can relate our faith to the current ethos and the mores of a society that's changing so much around us. Think of it. John the Baptist had an interesting and strong ministry, but he had to decrease and eventually his ministry was superseded by and subsumed by G into Christ. Jesus increased. John had to move aside. Perhaps we may have to set aside some of our preferences so that others may be able to come forward with their ideas and take up the tasks of evangelism, of leading, of, of setting up programs. So we have to be open and available for God's initiatives this year. But we also need to discern, this is the fourth point, we also need to discern how God has worked in our lives and in our church in the past. We should expect there's a continuity with what's gone before and avoid the idea that what is old is incompatible with what is new. The gospel continues as the message of Jesus entering our world to offer salvation from our sins through his death and resurrection. And when we think of changes, you and I must respect the history of what God has done before. And so respect the lives of our Christian ancestors. It's right to honor the saints of our church, although we all know they were not as perfect as we would like to think. We need to be able to look back and cherish and embody what is timeless from the past and be prepared to welcome change that relates to the present culture and concepts that we may see in our music and our movies and social media. It's this wonderful continuity in the work of the Spirit from the beginning and through many stages of God's work of revelation and redemption through history. It's a wonderful continuity that should secure us and encourage us as we move forward. So fifthly and, and finally, we always need to look beyond the year. Whatever this year holds, let's not be totally confined to it. Look beyond it. As a Christian, we cannot escape the fact that this life is leading us into a future life, which will be better in every way. In fact, it will be a perfect life for each of us, each believer, utterly diverse, utterly unique, utterly glorious. So as the problems and difficulties come upon us, and they will, be careful that we don't let the cares and concerns of this world and of this year 
cloud or diminish our future goal. Our ultimate future as a Christian is assured. So there you have it. Five suggestions. In the beginning, God created and the Spirit moved upon the waters. As Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending like a dove. When Paul placed his hands on these, the Holy Spirit came on them. So as we pray, come Holy Spirit, may I suggest we seek every opportunity to get together with other Christians in service and worship. May we keep ourselves open to the Holy Spirit by being regular in our attendance at church, at Eucharist, and faithful in our personal devotions, and faithful in our commitments of service, the routines. May we be on the lookout for new initiatives of the Spirit, and be gracious if that means we may have to let some things go because they've served their purpose. And may we be thoughtful of the heritage given us by our forefathers in the faith, all the way back to the apostles. And in all of this year, may you and I be a people of hope, knowing that in the end, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Let us pray. Gracious Father, accept our thanksgiving for the year past. Renew our strength and courage for the present and grant us the faith and confidence and fullness of your spirit for this new year. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.